Hi Terry. This is Mike from Stagecoach Road Sewing and this is your new machine. And this is the final test uh, before we pack it up to ship her out to you. Um, let's go over a few things here. Um, this is your bobbin case, of course. It's down here below the slide plate. And uh, let's see if I have an empty bobbin. I do. Pardon my reach. First, let's wind the bobbin. This is your bobbin winder over here. Of course, you may already be familiar with this machine and uh, already know how to do everything, but just in case, this is how you wind your bobbin. You put the, actually, put the spool on the bobbin winder pin go through the tension device here. Put the thread through one of the holes of your bobbin. Hold it with your finger and put a few wraps around it. You want to wrap it this way because that's the way the thread's going to wind onto the bobbin. So after you get a few winds on it, it should hold itself in place. Push it onto the spindle of the bobbin winder. Turn the rubber wheel until the little keeper clicks into place. And at that point, when you push this, the uh, release lever seats itself in the bobbin. And as it fills, when it reaches uh, a certain point, it's going to turn itself off. Of course, we're not going to fill it enough to do that because uh, this is just a test sample. So your thread is on the bobbin, bobbin winder is in place, push down. Uh, the center knob in the hand wheel is your clutch knob. And if you want to turn that towards you, uh, quarter turn eighth of a turn uh, until it releases and then the hand wheel and the bobbin winder will turn but the rest of the machine doesn't cycle it's that simple we're not going to fill the whole thing because we already have a full bobbin there to release it you lift that lever and clip your thread off you're ready to put it in the bobbin case course you're not going to do that so I'm going to put the thread back on the spool set that one aside this is your foot control. Um, it came out of a cabinet and it was made to act as a knee lever. Uh, to use it as a foot control, you just fold that out of the way and then step on it. Uh, you'll probably want to mount this heavy machine in a cabinet. You can use it for a tabletop machine for as long as you want, but uh, uh, for the most stability, uh, uh, it's good for it to be in a cabinet. And you can probably pick up a cabinet off of Craigslist or at your local thrift store. When you put your uh, bobbin in the bobbin case, you want the thread to be coming off the top this way. Uh, because it's going to go into this slanted slot here. You want it to kind of double back on itself. You pull your thread until it clicks under the leaf spring. And then it's got proper tension on it. 
we're going to leave four or five, six inches of thread for the needle to bring up. Then you push this onto the spindle in the middle of the hook down here. You push it in until it clicks into place. And you tighten up your clutch knob again. Okay, to wind. Okay, to thread the machine, the spool goes on the spool pin through the upper thread guide down into the slot in the side of the upper tension assembly all the way around so you can catch this check spring here. And then back down and under the bigger thread guide here, up and through the take up lever. Now, if you got it right, when you pull on the thread, your check spring should move. See that? So from the take up lever, you go down to the next thread guide down here. The next one down here and then this one down here on the needle clamp let's pull a little more thread good and then when you go through the eye of the needle it's a good idea to cut a nice square end on your thread because it's kind of hard to poke a frayed end through that tiny hole in the needle. There we go. Pull just enough thread to, uh, yeah, anyway. Hold on your thread, cycle the machine towards you one time, and that will wrap the upper thread around the bobbin case and bring up your lower thread. Put your thread between the toes of the presser foot and out towards the back. Then we're ready to sew. This lever back here raises and lowers your presser foot. Put your fabric under the presser foot you want to push your foot pressure down to about halfway. And we're going to set our stitch length at, let's go about two and a half. This is your stitch length lock, and that makes it so your forward thread uh, stitch length will be the same as your reverse stitch length. If you want a little more stitch length, it still goes an equal distance when you do a reverse stitch. So your, I guess what I'm trying to say is your stitch length remains the same whether you're in forward or reverse. That's what this uh, is for. So we're going to set it about Two and a half. That's kind of medium short stitch length. Hold your threads uh, and set a couple of stitches and then you're ready to go. Step on the foot pedal and we're off to the races. This is a nice, smooth, strong, fast machine. Okay, so that's a uh, straight stitch forward, and uh, let's see, this is straight stitch reverse, down is forward, up is reverse, and uh, so 
suppose you want to sew a zigzag. This is your zigzag adjuster, your stitch width adjuster, and this is the register for it. And there's a cool thing, if you can find it, I haven't been able to find it, there's a socket in there for a mini light bulb that makes this light up a little bit, if you can find it. Uh, they don't make them anymore. So, uh, let's see. We're on zero right now for straight stitch, so let's go about halfway. We're going to set it on two. This is your stitch width lock. You can lock it if you choose to. And uh, now it'll sew a medium zigzag. If you want a wider zigzag, loosen your lock and turn it up to three or four. And again, you can you can lock these in place to hold it so it only stays right there, or you can play with it while you sew. Change, vary your stitch width to make interesting patterns and swirls or uh, ribbons. Yeah, mess with it. It's fun. Uh, oh yeah, and the uh, automatic stitch pattern cams. We've got a nice little array of them there for you. You press down on the automatic zigzag lever to move it, move it over to the left, and that moves the uh, followers back a little bit so you can put the cam in place. And when you set it back, it puts the follower right up against the edge of the stitch pattern cam to follow it. Uh, there are two little holes in the bottom of this that You'll want to align with the two little pins on either side of the spindle down there. You'll feel it when it drops into place. Put your automatic zigzag lever back. And always be sure that your needle is up out of the fabric whenever you change your stitch width or put in a stitch pattern cam so you don't bend your needle. And that's all you need to do for that. Uh, move your stitch width back to zero because it's and leave these open because it's just going to move freely. And probably want a close stitch on that. Let's see. Probably less than a one, but if you do a really close satin stitch, you're going to want a special satin stitch foot that has a little channel so that the thread that builds up when you do a satin stitch can glide under there without hanging up on the bottom of the presser foot. So if you watch the needle, you see that it changes the zigzag while you're sewing. That's what makes the cool stitch patterns. Don't have to be a racehorse. Uh, I broke the thread because I got eager and went, was going pretty fast there. When you raise the presser foot, it releases the uh, tension on the upper tension so you can pull your thread. Got another fresh end. You'd be amazed how much easier it is to thread the needle once you get used to cutting that nice clean end on it. Bottom thread is still in place. So 
there are some operations you can go really fast on, and there's some operations that you don't want to. It's not going to hurt the machine if you break the thread a few times. So uh, go wild, test it out, see what works, what doesn't. Uh, let's see, is there anything else you need to know? Your belt tension. You'll notice it's not super tight. You only want it tight enough that it uh, it turns the machine without slipping. Uh, if you get it too tight, it bogs the machine down, binds it up, slows it down. Uh, you're going to want to oil the machine, um, say once a month if you only use it uh, occasionally. Um, if it's been sitting for a few months when you take it out to sew, it's a good idea to uh, oil it up because the oil does evaporate. And if you're sewing with a dry machine, it not only, not only wears the machine, it bogs it down and um, makes the uh, things that are supposed to move against each other not move as well, so your zigzags and your stitch patterns may not be as nice. So just, just get in the habit of uh, uh, oiling once a month or so. If you sew every day, of course, you probably want to oil every day or two or three. Um, again, you know, you'll, you'll get the feel of it and be able to tell when it's bogging down. There's uh, an oiling guide in the manual that tells you where to oil it. Um, and here's how you do it. You take the uh, two screws and the top out. Pretty simple. And the top just lifts off. And uh, then you'll be able to reach all those oiling points that the manual will show you. open the uh, face plate so you can get to the uh, oil holes in here and you'll see the each of the movement points has a little oil hole you just put one drop of good sewing machine oil in each oil hole and you want to put a couple drops where the needle bar goes up and down through the uh, a frame here. Put one drop on your presser foot uh, bar. Um, let's see, a couple more oiling points. One back here. I think there might be one or two points that the manual will show you, but you won't see an oil hole for it. And you just oil at the both ends of the piece that moves. So is that everything? Yeah, it looks like it. Pretty easy. It's worth your time to do that. Another nice feature of this machine is that when the needle is up out of the way and the presser foot is raised, you can just lift out your needle plate so you can get in here and clean out the old uh, lint and dust that collects in here. Uh, it's another thing that causes wear on the machine, especially polyester. Polyester dust is kind of abrasive. Polyester thread is a little bit abrasive. Um, not uh, so much to be a problem, but over the years, you'll notice that the thread can wear a little groove in various parts. Again, probably not something that you'll ever have to worry about. And you just 
drop this right back in. You don't have to take any screws out. And you're good to go. Of course, you'll have to bring your lower thread up again. Is there anything else you need to know? That's all that I could think of. So this is a wonderful machine. And I think you're going to be very happy together. This is Mike at Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, signing off.